Welcome back to the Daily Dope Show. Um, so last week was Hemp History Week. And I know, you know, everybody was too focused on the Cannabis Cup and all the things going on with legalizing marijuana and Trump saying he was going to sign some bill that was going to end the drug war and all this stuff. We're going to skip all that, but I just wanted to say on that front that there is support is gaining, by the way. Momentum is building. Um, it's early in the week, but I, my prediction is by the end of the week, we're going to have a big headline for this uh, the States Act bill. But what I want people to do is exercise some caution out there. This is not going to end the drug war. This is not going to end the war on weed. This isn't even, it's not even descheduling or anything like that. It, I mean, it doesn't do anything. It just makes the coal memo a permanent thing. So we're not going to get to do any research. We're not going to do any um, VA letting veteran writing recommendations for veterans to use medical marijuana. We're not going to see any of that. It's just, it's just the same thing as it was before the coal memo got rescinded. Plus, there's a couple other cool things in there. There's a thing that makes uh, hemp not a Schedule One, And then there's another thing that makes it so banking is protected. Um, so that's all cool. We need that thing to get through and pass. Like that, It's the only thing I could see that's gonna. Besides this, McConnell inserts hemp legalization into the farm bill now this story probably got by everybody because you know everybody's so stoked about all the things going on with everything else that who cares about hemp right even though it was hemp history week <laughs> and usually during hemp history week i will do at least one or two stories about hemp and i'm you know maybe i did maybe i didn't i don't think i did but lately i've been doing a lot of stories about hemp so I don't feel bad about it because I'm basically staying on top of the hemp situation like I always do um, and reporting it to my audience. <clears throat> so you'll be, you know, informed and you'll, you'll know what's going on, you know. Now, if it's something specific to your state, you might want to check it out. But as far as I know, Michigan was the only state that went hardline, um, take that shit off the shelves that I know of if anybody's got any information about another state where they literally will not let you sell hemp derived CBD anywhere please let me know about that so Tom Angel once again bringing us the good dope and he did a story also during hemp week um, about Ron Wyden and how Ron Wyden popped onto the scene with a, a bunch of uh, hemp products right onto the um, the floor of the Senate. And what did he bring? Well, let's just take a look at this real quick. Maybe. His consent is present that uh, the this quorum call be vacated. I, I just kind of Not objection. segued into this. President, no I apparently. would now ask unanimous consent that I be allowed to bring two baskets of hemp products onto the floor of the Senate. Without objection. Mr. President, it was not very long ago when I was on the floor of the Senate with the distinguished majority leader, Senator McConnell, and the two of us were making the case for our bipartisan bill to legalize hemp, which we are very much interested in having included in the farm bill. And I will talk a little bit more about uh, our work on that our original sponsors were Senator Merkley and Senator Paul. And since then, we have added 
as co-sponsors 28 additional members of the United States Senate on as co-sponsors. So what I'm going to do this afternoon for just a few minutes is talk about why it is so important that our bipartisan legislation, now co-sponsored by almost a third of this body, get enacted and be included as part of the Farm Bill. Now, Mr. President, it is Hemp History Week again, and that is why I'm back on the Senate floor to talk about the only Schedule I controlled substance that you can sew into a T-shirt <laughs> and wear through TSA. And here, as we start, is the real head scratcher. Products made with hemp are perfectly legal, but growing industrial hemp is a crime. There can't be many policies on the books that are more anti-farmer than that one. So I've had a bottom line, discussed this with Majority Leader McConnell here recently on the floor of the Senate, and that is, if you can buy it at a supermarket in America, our farmers ought to be allowed to grow it in America. For me, this issue goes back to a trip my wife and I took to a grocery store near our home in southeast Portland. Nancy was pregnant with our youngest daughter at the time, and you're always on the hunt for healthy foods that will fill your cart. So we grabbed up the fruits and vegetables and there, perched on one of the shelves, was a large bag of hemp hearts. And the packaging had really big, colorful text and it said it was heart healthy and protein rich. But I knew the product couldn't have been grown in the United States because there was a federal ban. So I looked at this product and I turned to my wife and I said, you know, hemp growers in places like Canada and China must just be laughing all the way to the bank. They're cashing in while our farmers have their hands tied by the current hemp restrictions. So here with me on the floor is one of our very capable young staffers, Malcolm from Southern Oregon. And Malcolm is holding a variety of products that are made with hemp. This Schedule I substance that our laws make out to be a perilous danger to the public. So for a few minutes, let's take a look at what Malcolm's got. He's got a few Schedule I snack bars. He's got some Schedule I hand soap. He's even wearing a Schedule I necktie. The point is, they're all perfectly legal products that you'll find on shelves and stores throughout the nation, but because the hemp had to be imported, none of it could be considered fully American-made. So I want to, as I have with the majority leader on past occasions, make sure that everybody understands a simple fact about hemp. Hemp is not a drug, and treating it like one was wrong from the get-go. Smoking hemp would be nothing but a waste of time, breath, and lighter fluid. It defies common sense that our laws consider hemp to be dangerous and addictive, like <laughs> crystal meth. Having one too many hemp granola bars 
might give you a stomach ache, but you aren't going to land in the hospital. So hemp is not a drug. What it is, is a huge opportunity for American farmers. That's why the original sponsors of this legislation, Senator McConnell, Senator Merkley, Senator Paul, myself, introduced the Hemp Farming Act of 2018. It is the latest version of a bill that I began putting in front of this body in 2012. Our bill would end hemp's days as a controlled substance and it would legalize its growth in America. What the bill does is it clears the way for farmers in Oregon, Kentucky, literally from sea to shining sea, it gives the green light to farmers across the land who are clamoring for the growth industrial hemp, legalized industrial hemp would bring for their farms and their communities. Now. Hard not to listen to that guy. A little boring at the beginning, but I mean, you know, you can't argue with any of these talking points about hemp. <clears throat> no matter how much you like or hate marijuana, you know, it's not, hemp is not that. So to have it on schedule right next to heroin is kind of fucking, this is just silly, dude. I mean, <laughs> we look, this country, we look dumb as hell for this hemp policy that's been going on since 1937. I mean, there was a little break during World War II where the government was like, oh, hey, we need some hemp, by the way, for the war effort. <laughs> These people in Kentucky, you know, I mean, this this hemp thing is making strange bedfellows out of people. For example, I don't know too many people, period, that can stomach Mitch McConnell for any reason. But all of a sudden, <laughs> he's like my favorite guy because of this hemp situation. Um, and quite frankly, uh, like I was saying, is the people in Tennessee and Kentucky and Colorado and California, the, the hemp producers that if you look in the history books and look at where the big bulk of the hemp was produced for that war effort in World War II or prior to the 1937 ban on hemp, you'll find that it was concentrated in those states that I just mentioned. You know, you had the upper uh, western plains and straight up west coast states like Oregon, Colorado, California. Um, and then you had uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, that little area down in that area with South Carolina, Virginia, all that included. Um, some of these states, though, were so full of hemp plantations that that's pretty much what their state's economy um, was based on. And Kentucky is one of those states. And because of that, ever since the ban on hemp began... Um, Kentucky's been fighting to try to change it, to try to put some kind of, uh, sanity in the policy that made marijuana illegal, which also made hemp illegal. But, you know, obviously their efforts were futile because it wasn't that they accidentally made hemp illegal because they wanted to make marijuana illegal. No, no, no. That's not how it worked at all. It really worked like... They needed something to be illegal. And since hemp was about to become a billion dollar crop because of a new machine that was invented to strip out the fibers from it called the decorticator, um, all the industries that stood to lose money fought against it. And how could you fight against it? Well, you could tie it to marijuana and you know, that's what they did. They were like, oh, alcohol prohibition, man, that was a good time. Those are great times, weren't they? How can we get those great times back? Oh, I got it. Marijuana. We can, we can go after that. I mean, for no other reason other than it was very 
you know, marijuana was not a, a public scourge or, you know, there was never an underground scene that was a big, you know, a bunch of people smoking weed. Back in them days, it, marijuana was so normalized as a, as far as being cannabis and cannabin, cannabinoid, whatever they call it, uh, cannabis, UPC, <laughs> nobody cared about smoking weed they didn't know about it that much and the people that did you know cool um they weren't looked at as it wasn't looked at as something big deal and people you know like my grandma would tell me stories about back when she grew up on a farm in georgia and she would say that she called they called it rabbit tobacco and that when they were kids they experimented with rabbit tobacco whatever the hell that meant but you know she never really and she was born in 1921 so you know by the time marijuana became illegal she was getting to be an adult and the thing about it is is uh people it wasn't stigmatized then i mean reefer madness was coming out but i mean people didn't look at those <clears throat> kind of those movies when they came out and take them seriously all right, I think I've babbled enough. Let's go ahead and knock this story out. So McConnell, you know, he he had a lot of steam and traction going, but let's face it, the legislative session is about to come to a close. <clears throat> How do I know that? Because the weather's getting nice out. So <clears throat> basically, they want to get this done. And how do you get it done? You attach it to something that you know is going to get done. <clears throat> instead of have it be its own thing. Uh, U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is following through on a promise to use large-scale agriculture and food policy legislation as a vehicle to legalize hemp. The GOP leader announced on Friday that he successfully inserted hemp provisions into the Farm Bill, which is expected to move through committee next week. Securing the Hemp Farming Act as part of the 2018 Farm Bill has been a top priority of mine, McConnell said in a press release. As a result of the hemp pilot program, which I secured in the 2014 Farm Bill, Kentucky's farmers, processors, and manufacturers have begun to show the potential for this versatile crop. Today's announcement will build upon the progress to help the Commonwealth enhance its standing at the forefront of hemp's return to American agriculture. I look forward to continuing to work uh, with my Senate colleagues and my partners in Kentucky, including Kentucky Commissioner of Agriculture Ryan Quarles, to grow hemp's bright future. The announcement comes three days after McConnell swiftly moved a resolution through the Senate acknowledging hemp, uh, hemp's economic potential and historic relevance. It was adopted without any objection from any senator. That's nice to know. On Wednesday, Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat from Oregon, brought two huge baskets of non-psychedelic cannabis products onto the Senate floor to commemorate Hemp History Week. Uh, quote, Hemp has proven itself uh, as a job-creating growth industry with far-reaching economic potential. It's just common sense that farmers in Oregon and across our country should be allowed to cultivate this cash crop, Wyden said in a McConnell's New press release, quote, our bipartisan legislator strikes America's outdated anti-hemp laws from the book so American consumers can buy products made with hemp grown in America. It's grateful to Senator, or I'm grateful to Senator McConnell for his leadership in getting the Hemp Farming Act into the Senate uh, Farm Bill, and I'm proud to keep working with our bipartisan co-sponsors, Senators Merkley and Paul, to pass our bill into law. And there he is right there. Uh, warning, I did not preview this, so let's see what he says. Oh, sh Hi, folks. Ron here with a special edition of the Ron Report. A few minutes ago, I just learned that the Senate leadership will include legislation written by Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and I to include our legislation to legalize hemp so that farmers can grow it in Oregon and across the country. For too many years, the federal government has had the misguided view that hemp was like a drug. It isn't. And by the way, if you tried to smoke hemp, 
you'd just be wasting your lighter fluid. So I'm really pleased that this bipartisan legislation is now moving ahead. I want to express my thanks to my colleague, Senator Merkley, and also to Senator Paul from Kentucky. This has been a bipartisan bill for some time, and it would go a long way to ending this anti-farmer, anti-common sense federal policy that has denied opportunities to our farmers. When our proposal becomes law, and you go into a grocery store, you'll be able to see packages that proudly say, grown in America. And thanks once again, guys. This is, uh, this is some pretty historic stuff going on recently. And I just want to emphasize that, that what I do on this channel isn't necessarily grandstanding or trying to become famous because I talk about weed and shit. Obviously, that if that was what I was trying to do, I would have stopped a long time ago. This is like the slowest growing YouTube channel I think I've ever witnessed in my life. And I'm actually doing stuff that I think is good, but I'm not trying to toot my own horn either. I'm just saying that what I'm doing is I'm reporting on the pertinent things that are happening in this historic revolution of marijuana laws changing. I mean, you can you can argue with some of my talking points if you want, and you can disagree with some of my opinions if you want. I don't care. That's 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 what opinions are all about, you know. Um, maybe I go a little bit too far against the corporate takeover on this side, or maybe I'm a little bit too for, you know, too much in favor of the regulation uh, process over here, or whatever. I mean, it just depends on what day you ask me about what topic I guess but what I do do is I do this to document what's going on and this right here is very important um, this move that McConnell did is is super huge um, so I, I guess that's all I got to say about it uh, we'll go ahead and read the rest of this though in april mcconnell introduced a standalone bill to legalize hemp and it already has nearly a third of the senators signed on as co-sponsors yeah we pretty much know all this um let's see <clears throat> um but yeah we don't forget though last month house republicans blocked floor votes on several hemp related amendments to the chamber's version of the farm bill but if the provisions get past the Senate, McConnell's leadership and passion for the issue means they stand a good chance of being included in the final legislation that will be crafted by a House-Senate conference committee for delivery to the president. Despite McConnell's work on hemp, he does not support legalizing uh, cannabis, uh, marijuana. Um, it's like, whatever. I mean, we know that. You know, it's, it's Mitch McConnell. They're two different, entirely separate plants, McConnell said. There's a lot of confusion about what hemp is. It, is. it has an illicit cousin, which I choose not to embrace. Well, that's fine. You know, we don't really care what you embrace or whatever. But, you know, and if, if it wasn't Mitch McConnell, it would be somebody else. Like, if he wasn't the senator from Kentucky, I've been following this hemp issue for my whole life, pretty much. And there's always been somebody from Kentucky fighting for hemp, all right? Every, every, uh, I've never known there not to be because it's pretty bad what, you know, there's families that really suffered, families that had great legacies during the hemp era. And then after that, who knows what happened. So that's all I got for this one. Um, awesome news and you got to be happy about the historic uh, stuff going on, especially with hemp, especially with everything else. I mean, and like I said, that's what I do on this channel. So if you're new here, that's what I do. I mean, you can look back at my old videos. I don't really like to do that personally because I look back and I'm like, man, I suck at doing this. But whatever, it's all basically just me spewing a bunch of my own talking points. But I always read the articles. I mean, you can go back to my first couple videos. It's just me reading articles and telling you about wh how I feel about it. And one, uh, a person that I've been reading from 
uh, the beginning and from way before this is Tom Angel. And I can't thank him enough for sticking to these stories because not only does he break these stories and follow everything going on and he has a new uh, partner in crime um, over there with Kyle Yeager. Uh, but he, he's been doing this for a long time. He's an activist, and I don't think there's anybody that is as dedicated and busy as Tom Angel is on this. So that's all I got, guys. Peace.